Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Media Life from the News Hub. I am Porsche Gabo. Coming up this afternoon. Over 517,000 candidates across the country sit in this year's basic education certificate exams. Embattled MP for Boku Central, Mahama Yariga challenges qualification of Special Prosecutor Martin Amidu to bring charges against him. On the foreign front, six of eight men accused of rape, torture and murder of eight-year-old Muslim girl in Indian administered Kashmir region found guilty. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And in our very first story, the embattled member of parliament for Boku Central, Mahama Yariga, is challenging the qualification of otherwise of the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, to bring charges against him. Lawyers for the Boku Central MP are challenging his legitimacy to be special prosecutor of the Republic of Ghana. Lawyer for the MP, Dominic Ayini, filed a motion at the Financial and Economic Crime High Court presided over by Justice Ifia Sewa Asaribotri challenging the qualification of the special prosecutor to prefer charges against his client. Ironically, a pending application at the apex court of the land, which was raised, which has raised similar issues, was also filed by Dominic Ayide. According to the affidavit in support of the motion filed by lawyers of the MP, Mahama Yariga stated that he has been advised by counsel and believe same to be true that the special prosecutor Martin Amidu, who is above 65 years, is not qualified to hold the office of special public prosecutor since the holding of that office is in contravention of Article 1991, Section 4 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. In court today, Justice Ifya Sewa Asaribotri ordered the parties to file their legal arguments instead of arguing orally in courts in order to save some time. She gave all parties 72 hours to file same and Justice Ifia Sewa Saribotri subsequently ruled that she will deliver a ruling on the issues raised at the next court sitting which she fixed for Monday 17th June 2019. And Edu G. Tamaklo, who is member of the Council of the Team for Mahama Yariga, spoke to the media after court proceedings. My lady made it clearly that we have two pending applications before her in respect of the two cases. And so she has made a specific order that we should address her by way of written submissions, the arguments that we intend to raise and file it within 72 hours and we are to do so simultaneously. And so we should be able to do that by Wednesday before 2 p.m. We have an application on record to have the entire charge sheet dismissed because uh, we have raised issues about the capacity and the qualification of the special prosecutor. We have also raised an issue about the remits of the special prosecutor, the kind of offenses that he can investigate. The maker of the law, that is parliament, stated that he can only investigate corruption and corruption-related offenses. We are saying that the offenses that he had brought against specific counts, against our client, Mahama Yariga, do not fall within the remits of the powers of the special prosecutor. So basically, these are it. So we expect my lord to make a decision on that. Let's now go to the Ashanti region where the District Chief Executive of Amansia South District, William Asante Bidiako, has expressed grave concern about the state of insecurity in Tontokum following violent confrontation between residents and security personnel. Although calm has been restored, there is heavy military presence in the community to keep the peace. Residents of Tonto Chrome in the Amansia South District of the Ashanti region have over the years kicked against operations of small-scale miners to protect their lands and water bodies. A team of security officers are alleged to have been invited by a mining firm operating in the community to protect the company's property from potential mob action. Residents, however, clashed with the security personnel last week. 
In the ensuing confrontation, some residents sustained various degrees of injuries, with three of them in critical condition. About 100 residents were also arrested and sent to the Kumasi Central Police. Most indigents, including the chief of the town and some opinion leaders, have fled. There is an easy calm as military personnel patrol the community. The residents want government's intervention to bring lasting peace to the area. The men and children have all left the town. We don't know their whereabouts. Whether they are still alive, no one can tell. We, we've tried our possible best. Our brothers here are trying for us to find a chief. That's my dad. But we have nowhere to go. District Chief Executive William Asante Bidiakon says the security situation in the area is a major concern. We would not sit down and allow hoodlongs to take over this country and try to detect. If we allow what is going in, on in Tontokrum to go on, people in Obwasi will rise up. People at um, 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 Newmont will rise up. People at Takwa will rise up. People at Mansun Krain will rise up against Asanko. We need to make sure that proper things are always done. Benjamin Edo is our Shanti Regional Correspondent following up on that story and joins us. So, Benjamin, what is the current situation in the town now? Yeah, for sure. The community still remains a good town uh, after the incident happened in that community last week. But for the presence of the military personnel who are there to protect life and property in the community, majority of the inhabitants, including women and their babies, have had to make refuge in the bush and nearby communities like Dakano, Afreso, uh, Agoyesu, and other communities for fear of being arrested or brutalized by the soldiers who are currently in the community. Mm -hmm. The chief of the community, Nana Kosi, that uh, Tontu, whom uh, we were reported earlier on that he still not be found, uh, we, we called one of the, uh, the, the sons and he, he told us a moment ago that uh, though the, uh, the chief is not in the community, they have uh, informed, uh, he has called them a moment ago to let them know where he is, but he also trying to make sure that Kram returns to the community before he returns. And other uh, opinion leaders in the community, we also left that particular day, are also here to report to the community at the moment. Now, Benjamin, about 100 residents were arrested and sent to the Kumasi Central Police. Have they been released? Yeah, as I'm speaking with you, 75 of them are still in the police custody mm -hmm. trying to uh, investigate this particular incident. Mm -hmm. But the police also told us a moment ago that uh, they are only waiting for the arrival of the leaders who are most involved in this particular act for them to unravel this particular issue. And I must tell you that the institution in that one to group is not the first time that you've been witnessing this. Yeah. In 2017, when the then Minister of Land and Natural Resources, Peter Anewu, closed down a mining firm for not having legal documents. Soon after the exercise, the group in that community was that, that uh, mining site uh, where they looted everything belonging to the, that particular mining site. And uh, last year, we also had a stiff confrontation with some small scale miners who are not indigenous of that particular community. Mm. So the insecurity issue that the, 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 the DC raised is what is happening in that community. But the assembly is doing everything possible to ensure peace in that particular community. Also. Benjamin, before you go, many people fled the town when the situation began. Have they returned? Yeah, like uh, I told you earlier on, we are here to report to the community for fear of being arrested or uh, being brutalized by the security personnel in the community. Uh, the chief's palace still remain closed. Mm -hmm. Some of the affected people who were around to other communities are also here to report to the community at the moment. Thank you very much for your time. And Benjamin Edo is our Shanti Regional Correspondent. You're still watching Media Live from the News Hub. Away from the Shanti region, at least two or more pupils get injured at the Dansuman Children's Park in Accra every week. All facilities have broken down, but children continue to endanger their lives due to the absence of a playing ground. Joseph Armstrong Gold, a lot better reports. The situation at the park has become dangerous with sharp end metals exposed. This children's park is the only recreational facility in Dansoman and its neighboring communities. What stood as a major playground for children has now become a death trap. 
Before the 2016 general election, both the MDC and MPP parliamentary aspirants promised to have this pack fixed after the general election. Three years on, nothing has been done here, with more and more children getting wounded any time they come here to play. Look, this is how deadly the pack has become. But the children won't stop playing here because as they claim this is a rightful place to have fun. Aside the trees, nothing else at the Dansoman Children's Park is fit enough to serve recreational needs of patrons. Despite the poor state of the playground, children still go there to play and have fun. The children jump from one play item to the other, but with extra care as any missed step could end them up in hospital. But for these children, it is their only source of joy after several hours of classroom lessons. Even the football park is a painful story to tell, reflecting the pathetic state of the children's park. This park used to be one of the nicest parks that we used to come and train on, you know, play on those times when we were in primary school and GHS. But right now, as you can see, popularly known and then Suman Children's Park Tunga. You know, it's in, it's in a completely bad state. Over the years, people have said they would come and help, but then there's been nothing so far. Years ago, the Donsuman Children's Park was a mad sea, mad go for children. But now, several facilities have become white elephants. Municipal Chief Executive of Ablikuma West, George Cyril Blay, wants support to have the playground rehabilitated. It's quite uh, an amount if we are to revive the place. And as we speak, we don't have the funds to do that. So what we're trying to do is to put a finishing touch to the documents, then possibly put it out there for anybody who is interested in the kit stuff to come and partner the assembly so we put it back in shape. Children who cannot afford to pay to play at private grounds want authorities to take serious their right to decent place to play and have fun. Joseph Armstrong, Gouda Lobby, TV3, Dan Suman. Let's now go to the northern region where peasant farmers at Balkibani in the Yendi municipality are agitated over the gender ministry's refusal to sign a letter of intent required to secure funding to commence the operations of a soya processing factory. Managing director of Alafi Foods, Claude Convise, has secured $30 million to establish the six factories and a government one district, one factory initiative in Zugu, a community in the Mion district. A report by Zubeda Ismail. The project is expected to support 30,000 farmers in Yendi, Saboba, Chereponi, Gusheu, Karaga, Bimbela and Mion to grow soya beans and jatofa. To be eligible for funding support, Alafe Foods will require a letter of intent from the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection to buy the textured soya protein for the Ghana school feeding program when they are eventually manufactured. But acquiring the needed funding has not been fruitful as the company claims that efforts to get the minister to sign the letter of intent has yielded no positive results. According to the company, it first proposed to the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection in March last year to supply soya meat mixed with a prepared vegetable sauce for school children enrolled on the Ghana school feeding program at a very low cost. According to Managing Director of Alafe Foods, Claude Conversa, the minister has not only delayed in signing the letter of intent, it has also given its Nyan based company the go ahead to manufacture similar products. We would like to partner with the government and propel Ghana beyond aid. It doesn't take much for the government to provide us a letter of intent since our proposal is so attractive to the school feeding program and our products are so beneficial towards eradicating childhood malnutrition and lack of protein that we ask the government please to give us this letter of intent. The delay is adversely affecting some 3,000 soya beans farmers who switch from cultivation of maize to soya beans following a drop in the soil viability and ready market. The farmers reveal they made the switch with the hope that the company will provide ready market for their crops. The farmers want that wide districts in the northern region and the other adjoining regions in the north are being left out in the One District One Factory initiative. 
The farmers and owner of the company have appealed to the president to step in and get the necessary documents signed for work to start. Another farmer, Kweku, shared his woes after harvesting during a meeting with owners of Alafei Foods. If these factories are set up, we are sure our lives will improve. They will buy our soya beans when we farm it. There will be money to take care of our children in school and other family needs. One of the food products Alafe Foods will manufacture from soya bean is textured soya protein, also known as soya meat. Away from the northern region, the Accra Metropolitan Chief Executive Mohamed Ajay Sowa has hinted his outfit will install air quality sensors in the city. Speaking at World Environment Day in Accra, the AMA boss noted the device will help in monitoring quality of air in the city to inform policy direction. The air quality monitoring sensor will provide real-time information on the quality of air in and around the metropolis to inform decision-making. Air pollution has been described as a silent killer. It kills about 7 million people annually worldwide. In Ghana, 28,000 deaths are attributed to air pollution and related diseases, with Accra recording 2,000 deaths annually. In collaboration with the University of Cape Coast, we will be installing an air quality monitoring sensor on top of this city hall to give citizens real-time information on the quality of air in and around the city to inform decision-making based on data. I wish that we will have fruitful deliberations and make concrete commitments to support bold actions by all. Director General of Ghana Standards Authority, Professor Alex Dodu, assured the authority will ensure the device works efficiently. We will ensure that when the mayor's uh, wind uh, air monitor is put on the building, we are calibrating the equipment. It's all right to have a meter, but make sure it's calibrated because it can give you the wrong reading and lead you to do wrong things. Coming up as the MTN video report, and today our citizen journalist Cosmos actually reports on structures on waterways at Vume in the Volta region. See the house. The water is entering all the room here. This is the waterway. Yes, the people are building on it. Government to assist us through this. The water have to pass here and go. But yes, still people are building their structures on it. You can also send your video reports via WhatsApp on the number 055 143 3044. You're still watching Middle Life from the News Hub. We have more news coming up shortly, especially on the commencement of the BEC. Do stay with us. Hello again, you're watching Media Live from the News Hub. This year's basic education certificate exams has begun nationwide. A total of 517,332 students will write this year's exams, an increase of 7,508 candidates from the 2018 figure. Last year, 509,824 candidates sat for the exams. Let me give you a breakdown of the candidates writing this year's BEC. So so over 500,000 final year junior high school students are certain in this year's exams and this number is made up of 263,616 males and 253,716 females and these candidates are from 16,000 871 public and private junior high schools across the country and we have 1,800 80 centers across the country and this exam will be manned by 1,880 supervisors and 18,136 invigilators. Let's now give you a regional breakdown. The Ashanti region we told has the highest number of candidates that 104,461 candidates alone writing in the Ashanti region. In the Greater Accra region, 90,584 
four candidates are writing. In the central region, 55,535 candidates. The western region has 52,806 candidates writing in this year's BECE. In the Bono, Bono East and Hafu regions, we have 49,127 candidates. Eastern region, 47,964. Northern region, 43,960 candidates writing the BECE. Still on the BEC, our Shanti Regional Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar has been touring some centers to assess the situation and joins us with more updates. It's been a rainy Monday morning, but candidates writing this year's basic education certificate examination here in Kumasi have braced up for the two papers. Of the over 500,000 candidates writing this year's BEC examination, Ashanti region presented the highest of a little over 104,000, um, comprising of 53,000 males and 52,000 females. Now, examination has started on a smooth note with no anomaly recorded so far. How has the exams been going so far? Oh, so far, we haven't uh, recorded any problem. It is going on smoothly. In my center, this is Center C, I have 296 candidates. There's no absentee. So, so far, so good. No problem. No examination, more practices. No. I haven't recorded anything yet. Some stakeholders have been touring the centers to encourage the students and also advise them to refrain from any form of examination more practices. Uh, if you compare attendance of today uh, to that of the last year, uh, this year one is very encouraging because now we've moved to about four centers. And the first place that we went, it was only two, we recorded only two absentees. Mm, the second place that we went, that was St. Hubert. There the attendance was fabulous. Mm, if you look at if you look, the only challenge was the lighting. The only challenge was the lighting in which they will be improving upon it next time. My general advice to them is for them to learn hard, study hard, because now free senior high school are with them. Mm -hmm. But they need a passport to go and enjoy that free policy of the government. Mm -hmm. If you don't pass, you can't have the opportunity to go. So they have to forgo the television and concentrate on their books. Attendance is encouraging. Those who are absent, um, majority have tra they've traveled outside, so there is nothing that can be done about that. Unless one of the places that uh, one was preg is due to pregnancy and uh, the, the candidate is from a private school. That shouldn't have prevented the candidates from writing. You could have been here and one also were told the parents are saying he or he is underage and um, we will look into that. I advise that they do independent work devoid of um, any collusion or whatever and that um, I wish them good luck and success in the examination. How, how was the paper? The paper was very nice, yeah. We look and we see it very kind <laughs> to write it, so it was very, it, was, it wasn't dangerous to us at all. It was very kind. So how did the paper go? Oh, good. It's good. And I feel like it's good. So you think you can make it to the map? Yeah, I can make it. How prepared are you towards the other papers? I'm ready. I think, yeah, it, was, it wasn't difficult, so we were able to do it. So how prepared are you towards the next papers? Probably prepared. I'm ready towards it. 
So all the best to candidate right and the CSBC. So that was the situation in the Ashanti region. We'll go over to the northern region where over 43,000 candidates are sitting in the CSBEC. In the North Gonja district, the chief executive Ilyasu Adams says candidates sitting in the CSBEC will be provided with free hot meals for the duration of the exams. And Ilyasu Adams was interacting with candidates, teachers, invigilators, supervisors, and examination officers. A total of 389 candidates have been registered by the West African Examinations Council to sit for the 2019 exams in the North Gonja district. And the number is made up of 185 girls and 204 boys from 11 junior high schools in the district. A total of 13 invigilators with one external invigilator are supervising the exams today. And some parents for the past years have had to carry food to the examination center for their wards to prevent them from being late for their second paper. Let's go to the northern region and speak to our correspondent Zubeda Ismail. Zubeda, thanks for your time. What is the situation over there in the northern region? What's happening to hear you? Zubeda, in the north Gonja district, did all candidates show up for the first paper? Yes, yes. Um, all 389 registered candidates showed up for um, the first paper. And then, um, of course, um, we also had um, the police person around. We had any other important individual that is supposed to be part of today's mm. first paper uh, are present at the uh, um, district assembly. Zubeda, can you position yourself well? We can hardly hear you. Okay, sure, I can hear you. I was saying... We'll try and work on the lines and talk to Zubeda Ismail. But in the greater Accra region, over 50,000 candidates are writing for this year's BEC. And our correspondent, Wendy Lai, was at a centre and joins me here in the studio. Wendy, thanks for your time. Where have you been and what was the situation over well, there? Well, I went to the St. Theresa Centre at North Kanishi and... Like we heard from Kumasi, the atmosphere was very calm. Mm -hmm. Students, uh, candidates were seated right in the exams. We had um, there 266 candidates had registered, but we had recorded two absentees because I was told they had traveled um, abroad. So they weren't present mm -hmm. to write the exams. Um, some of the observations we made, I saw two security men there. I also realized that phones weren't allowed. So for even for invigilators, they weren't allowed to have their phones with them. And teachers of um, the various schools with candidates writing were accessed quite far from the exam center. And then also we spoke to Cassandra, who is um, the spokesperson for the Ghana Education Service. They're also going around. I think she mentioned that they had about 50 um, reps from GES who are going around to monitor and to make observations in relation to the exams. There's been some rumors about um, leakages. Especially religious and moral education. Yes, so I paper. spoke to her about it. She mentioned that um, they hadn't um, seen that yet and that they would revert if they should gather anything on it. I also spoke to Agnes um, Tekujo with the uh, Waik, and she mentioned that they hadn't also seen it. So we intend following up um, the story to find out if they are aware by the time probably we're done with this interview and what measures they're putting in place to ensure that that doesn't happen or that issue is dealt with. Thank you very much for your time. And okay. Wendy Lai will give us more updates as and when they happen. You're still watching Midday Live from the News Hub. We have business news coming up shortly. Do stay with us. In business this afternoon, stakeholders in the maritime and shipping industry have endorsed the automated facilities at the yet-to-be-opened new Tema port. They said the completion of the new seaport will entrench Ghana's position as the best hub in the sub-region. Ahead of the completion works and opening of the port, importers, exporters, manufacturers, freight forwarders, Holly drivers and related service providers have embarked on a familiarization tour to the facility. 
Organized by the Ghana Shippers Authority, stakeholders were taken through processes and procedures before the $1.5 billion terminal would become operational by the end of this month. The facility has the largest infrastructure and superstructure, advanced terminal operation system, efficient port accessibility, and the highest berth availability to make it a hub for West Africa. It is expected to have a high frequency of vessel calls, the shortest waiting time, and the fastest vessel turnaround time. The Chief Executive Officer of NPS, Mohamed Samara, indicated that several shipping lines have already expressed interest to make the new port their first port of call. We are moving into a phase of integrated testing. Integrated testing and simulation uh, will mean that uh, all those people that got trained on the new system will go live in a simulation of a vessel coming in. And actually, the day after tomorrow, we will have a ship alongside coming to stay for one week. This ship is just a test vessel. Some stakeholders also share their views. I'm expecting that the shippers authority will be working hand in hand with you as customs also, and all the authorities and GPHA as the landlord to make sure that you know, the procedures which you have to go through to exit Terminal 3, right from when you start online, when the, you, you get your manifest online, when you start the processes, it will go on as smoothly as possible. The facility that is available here, you are not going to have delays or congestion, you're going to clear your container, you find that it's in one um, terminal instead of the other. All of the processes have been automated. That's not just, of course, it's human beings who put the information in, but it will reduce the mistakes to the barest minimum. The World Bank is set to support the country's economic transformation with $200 million. Speaking in Accra at the Ghana Climate Innovation Center's Incubator Innovation Symposium, senior private sector specialist at the World Bank, Michael Est, noted a portion of the fund will be used to support entrepreneurship in the country. The World Bank will begin disbursing the $200 million support in July. The support, which is part of the Britain Woods Institution's economic transformation project, is expected to run for six years. Senior private sector specialist at the World Bank, Michael East, spoke about how the money will be disbursed. That economic transformation project includes over $75 million um, equivalent for entrepreneurship support um, that supports the government's agenda. That's the largest injection of funding for entrepreneurship that the World Bank has ever made in Ghana. So that includes over $45 million um, for early and gross stage uh, risk capital financing that will flow through a reformed and revitalized uh, Ghana Venture Capital Trust Fund. There's over $15 million of support for 400 of Ghana's highest potential small and medium-sized enterprises. The annual Incubating Innovation Symposium is hinged on the belief that intentional entrepreneurial ecosystem interventions, responsive financial and technical support could accelerate development. Executive Director of the Ghana Climate Innovation Center, Ruka Sanusi, explained the symposium encourages changes in fiscal policy redistribution for green private sector-led growth. And entrepreneurs exist as part of an infrastructure, as part of an ecosystem. They're financiers, there are policy makers that form part of that ecosystem, there are donors that form part of that ecosystem. So the whole idea of having this um, incubating innovation is to bring ecosystem people together. Right, so that we learn lessons from each other, we hear about each other's challenges, and from that um, whole process, we're able, each of us individually, when we go back to what we're doing as a VC, as a policymaker, we're actually being responsive to the needs of the other party. Promoting sustainable patterns of production in the economic sector must go hand in hand with changing unsustainable patterns of consumer consumption. Eben Ajekun Boating, TV3, Accra. And that's it for Midday Live. Thanks so much for watching. I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. For more news updates, log on to our website at 3news.com. Good afternoon.